Hi everyone and welcome to another video on the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and inside this box behind me is a Mopra Laser. It is the GI30 by Monport. In this video, I'm going to be doing the unboxing and the detailed setup of this machine. Thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. This is going to be a fantastic journey exploring this Monport Mopa Fiber Laser. This first video being the unboxing and detailed setup, this is going to be just the first video in a whole entire series dedicated to this laser machine. Other videos are going to include setting up the machine with the software EasyCAD 2. This is the free software that comes with the machine. Later videos are also going to include the software setup with Lightburn software. From there, we're going to start doing different projects, just exploring the engraving and color marking capabilities of the MOPA laser system here by Monport. My machine arrived in two boxes. There was an outer box that I already have removed. That is a plain brown uh, shipping box. I like to call that the sacrificial shipping box that gets all the dings and dents. That box had a nice plastic corner protector on all of the four corners on the top of the box. And then again, on the bottom four corners of the box, making sure that this arrived in perfect shape. And this box indeed did arrive in perfect shape. With that covered, I'm now ready to open this box up. And one of the first things that I'd like to answer for you is a lot of people are going to ask, what's the difference between the GI version that is here and the GP version? And that is the laser source. This GI version is a MOPA power source and that is going to really do a lot of great color marking for us. Getting back to the unboxing here, I'm just going to lay everything out on the table here, and then we'll take a close up look at everything. And this is what just some of the foam looks like that's on the inside of the box. Everything that I've ever had shipped to me that has this nice, thick, compressible foam has arrived in perfect shape. And I'm hoping, I'm gonna knock on wood, that this laser machine is no different. We'll see that I'm being very careful and taking my time as I'm doing some of the unboxing of the main machine. And that is because the main machine is two parts. There's a base and then the laser head and there's a permanently attached cable between the two of them. And I wanna make sure that that cable is not damaged. And I think the best way for me to get this out of the box the rest of the way is to set it on the floor and then lift it out. There we go, that is much easier. Let's take a closer look at all the contents that are included with the machine. This is the manual for the machine. It has a nice detailed setup of just a couple of the pieces that are needed to put the machine together to get it fully operational. It also has nice detailed setup of the EasyCAD software that is included on this USB drive. There's also an electronic version of the EasyCAD manual along with an electronic copy of the manual here. My little laptop doesn't have the USB port that fits this drive, but lucky for me, this machine includes this adapter piece that is going to be perfect. Underneath the manual is the quality control sheet for the JPT laser source. This is the MOPA laser source inside of the machine. Moving on, there's this really nice stainless steel for setting the focus on the machine. I have a nice full scale in millimeter on one side, and for those of us in America, inch is on the other side. There's some safety glasses, the main power cable, a foot switch to activate the machine. This is perfect when I'm doing large batches of items. Moving on is the USB cable, this has the common printer type cable. So if you ever lose this cable, damage it, or you'd like to use a longer one, you can always search on the internet for USB printer cable, and that'll get you the correct cable compatible with the machine. I'm going to skip over this and move over to this assembly boom. This sets the focus of the laser. 
This is motorized, it is adjustable from the software and also from the front of the machine. If you'd like to adjust this manually, there is a hand dial that goes to the very top of that assembly. There's a few screws for putting together the machine and some guide pieces for boxing in your work on the top surface here. Here's all the different attachment points. We just took a look at some fasteners that we'll need for putting the machine together. We have a nice wrench set to make sure we can do that. And my machine, I was able to get this with a nice sample pack of some materials to start engraving. Here's some business cards. And these are pretty thick cards. These are typically twice the thickness of what I usually see coming with a machine. We also have some nice anodized aluminum, and I believe these are going to be coated stainless steel, and then this is 304 stainless steel. So we're going to be able to black mark this and then also color mark it, and that's gonna be attributed to the MOPA power supply inside of the main unit. Moving on to the main machine, there's a few controls on the front here, a main power button, a down button for focusing on this main boom, the up button for the focusing, an e-stop button. Here is the laser head. As we move along to the back side, we're going to see that there's an umbilical cord that comes out. We'll trace that all the way around and it goes into the back of the base here where that MOPA power supply is located. It's very important not to kink or crush this cable because the optic cable going from the MOPA power supply up to the laser head, that is not user serviceable. We're not able to disconnect that cable and replace the cable that is permanently attached to the power supply up to the end of the laser head that's in here before it bounces around in some mirrors up here. On the back of the machine is the USB port, the port for the foot switch, rotary attachment, and a whole separate ground lug. When I move to the opposite corner, here's the main power plug-in with a built-in fuse box. This is a really nice complete package. It includes everything that I need to get started and up and running with my Monport laser machine. I want to loop back very quickly to the USB drive that comes with the machine. There's a number of important files that are on here. And the first thing that I like to do before I assemble the machine and even power it on is I like to take all the files on here and copy them onto the computer that I'll be connecting up to the machine. That way, when I go to do the software installation, I already have those files on my computer. And if I ever have any questions about the EasyCAD software or operating the machine, I already have those electronic manuals already on my computer. It's now time to clear off some of the extra clutter on the table and put the machine together. There's only really three main parts of the machine and that is this focusing arm, the laser head, and of course the base of the machine. Assembly is going to be very straightforward. I just need the small parts bag of screws and the included wrenches. I'm going to start it out by carefully placing the laser head off to the side, making sure I have a nice clean surface and access to the motor output shaft here. This attaches to the bottom of this focusing arm. And I'm allowed to have this threaded screw come all the way out and this is going to really help me get this coupler aligned up to the flat spot on this motor output shaft. I was having some troubles getting this coupler on the motor shaft. It wasn't fitting on all the way. It wasn't until I rotated the coupler and I realized that there is set screws on both sides of this coupler. After I loosened both of those up, making sure one of them is facing the flat, I can now place the coupler on top and it goes all the way down to the bottom. And I am going to tighten up the screw that has the flat towards that motor shaft first. And then I'll tighten up the other side. Once that's complete, I can carefully lower the frame of this focusing arm down. And now there's just four screws attaching this focusing arm down to the top surface of the main machine. I'll start out by just starting a couple threads on each of these fasteners before tightening them down all the way. 
that'll give me some wiggle room to make sure that all four fasteners get started properly. I'm now ready to install the manual adjust knob on the top of the assembly. The parts needed for this come in a parts bag that has the knob, a screw, a metal washer, and a plastic washer. The plastic washer goes on the very top, and when I flip this knob open, it reveals the mounting hole that the metal washer will go into, and then finally the fastener on top of that. I'll turn that until it pops on, and it's a snug fit. Now ready to install that final screw. The last step of the assembly is to attach the laser head up to the focusing mechanism. I wanna make sure that this is untwisted, no kinks in it before I place it onto the focusing mechanism. This looks good, and this might be an area where you may want to enlist a little bit of help, but I think I've got this. Here's the completed machine. This only took a couple minutes to put together, and it's pretty straightforward. Now, some of you with a keen eye might be asking when I put this on, did I make sure that the laser head is perfectly squared up to this matrix of holes here? And the answer to that is no. I'm going to be setting that up, getting the final alignment of the head to the workbed area when I install the software. I'm going to frame out a nice box. I'm going to use the reference holes here to do any minor adjustments on the movement of the head to make sure that I've got perfect alignment between these two components. And now for the most exciting moment, powering on for the very first time. Oh, check that out. I can hear the cooling fans initially coming on and those turn off just after a second. That is a part of the initialization and first power up of the machine. I'll also see that I have three red dots. This is going to be to approximate the focus of the machine. There's two red dot pointers in the front and the third one comes from within. And once I adjust the focus of this up and down, what I'm looking for is all three of those dots to converge down to one point. Here's what those three red dots look like. I'm going to continue to move the laser head down until I get all of those converging to one point. Pretty cool, I'll bump it a little bit more. A little bit past and I can go back up. If I find that these buttons are moving the focusing up and down too fast, I can always grab the manual focus dial on the top and very carefully get that into a perfect convergence of those three dots. Wow, I have to say, looking at this machine up close, right next to it, it is absolutely a beautiful machine. I was a little bit skeptical of the all black color of the machine, but actually in the shop here, I just love the color contrast. I also like the nice all metal aluminum base, the aluminum arm for the focusing, the aluminum housing for the laser head assembly. It's all very solid. The other areas of the machine that I think are really cool is that this is kind of the new design package for these fiber type machines where everything is integrated all into one unit. It's going to make it very easy for me to pick this up and move it over to another workstation. And if you're not familiar with these machines, conventionally this space would have been a separate case off to the side connected by this umbilical cord to the laser head with the focusing arm, and it would have a separate aluminum base off to the side. So I've got two big components. They're very stable. They're also very, very heavy, and it makes transporting or moving around the machine, even within the studio here, a little bit more difficult. Oftentimes I have to enlist help of a second person, again, because this umbilical cord is permanently attached between the base and the laser head. The other area that I like on here is the electronic lift. And initially I thought that this was going to move too fast to put it into a meaningful uh, focus because on a MOPA laser to get consistent color marking on different types of metal, this has to be perfectly consistently in focus. 
being off by a millimeter or two isn't going to get the correct shade of red or blue that I'm looking for. And having this adjustment dial on the top ensures that I can get it tweaked in perfectly. In a future video, when I do the software setup, we're going to see how I get the machine in perfect, consistent focus every time for great results. A couple of other things about this particular GI30 machine is the workspace for the engraving and color marking is going to be 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters. When we convert that over to inches, that's 5.9 inches squared. The power source again on here is going to be 30 watts. And this is kind of the gold standard when you're looking at a MOPA laser. 30 watts offers a lot of flexibility, including flexibility on the price point being pretty attractive. This is also available in two other flavors in a 20 watt version and a more powerful 60 watt version with the price points to follow those accordingly. I threw out just some of the details and specifications on this particular machine, but if you'd like to check out more detail on here, I encourage you to follow the link in the video description down below to the Monport website where you can check out all the juicy details on here. If you'd like to see some content in future videos, I'd love to hear about that in the comments down below. I had a great time creating this content for you, and I hope that you'll join me for future videos featuring the Monport GI30 MOPA laser machine.